All right, we're gonna take this everyday USB microphone and we're gonna make it sound like a professional microphone using only filters in OBS with no plugins required that will also reduce any background noise and any of the common problems that you're normally going to have. So let's get into it. Okay, so as we get started, you're gonna see that the volume's gonna be a little bit lower. We're gonna take care of a lot of those things and it's important that we get the filters done correctly. So we're gonna go to our microphone, we're gonna click on the three dots and we're gonna go to filters. So it is important that we get the filters in order. Don't worry, you can always change them after. But right now, the first thing we wanna do is add some gain. You're gonna notice that the volume is going to be a little bit lower in this instance. You can see it. I do have this done in post so that it you don't have to turn me up and down. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna add some gain so that we go a little bit higher. Now, I know the red area is known. That's where you clip. That's where things are gonna be. But if you're streaming or recording, don't worry. We're gonna make sure that we fix that later so that there are no issues. But we do wanna make sure that we kind of standardize this. So for me, I can see that I need about another five decibels of gain. So once I start talking, you can see I start to cross that threshold of right around negative 10, and it is peaking a little bit higher. And again, don't worry, we'll take care of that later, but make sure that you kind of fall around that negative 10 to negative six mark. Some people will tell you to push it all the way to negative three. I normally kind of cap out at negative six, but play with it as you see fit. All right, next up is for people that are using regular USB microphones, a lot of times you're gonna hear a lot of key clicks and we'll use that as an example now. So you can see that there's not a ton of noise, but you do wanna make sure to not have those key clicks in the background. We're gonna take care of that super simple by we're gonna use an expander. Now there is a noise gate and a noise suppression, but for this one, an expander works out really well for what I like to do. So we're gonna set the expander. We're gonna click the drop down and click gate. Now you saw that when we were typing, we were kind of coming through on that. This also goes if you have air conditioning or a fan on in the background, that's gonna be that low noise that is below your normal speaking volume but you don't want it to enter your stream. So when we went back there, we saw that we were around negative 40-ish and around negative 45 is normally where we're gonna see that. So what we wanna do is we wanna put the gate on that. That's basically when the microphone opens up for everything above negative 40 decibels or wherever this lands for you. If you don't have a lot of background noise, you can probably drop this, but I always like to make sure that there is something here, but depending on where you're at and what your noise environment is like is where you'll adjust this. For the ratio, this is normally a three or four to one in that range, but you can play with this on how aggressive this is. This is something you use your ear test, but for your standard amounts, you can start with three or four and you're gonna be good enough there. The next thing we wanna add is an equalizer. This is really important because this is very customized towards your voice. Now in OBS 29, they actually added a three band equalizer. Before you used to have to go out and download a third party application, install it, and it worked wonderful and it actually gives you a lot more control. But for people that are just setting up their stream, a three band equalizer is gonna do more than enough. Now this is gonna be the most important part. Now you've got your highs, your mids, and your lows. Think of your lows as your base of your voice, your mid more of your talking regular dialogue voice, and your highs a little bit on that high end. To visualize that, here is one of those plugins where if I talk with a deep voice, you can see the wave on the left. Where if I talk with a higher voice, you can see that those waves are gonna be more towards the middle of the spectrum. So that gives you a little bit of an idea. Now, this is very unique to you because I have a deep voice where you might not have as deep a voice. Not only that, but the microphone that you're using might be picking signals up differently. So for everybody, you've got a couple of factors in play here, and this is where you really wanna play with it. Now, in the high ends of things, this is normally called your presence. Most people will take this up and you don't normally take many of these beyond two to three, maybe a maximum of five decibels, but normally around two to three decibels up or down on each of these is where you land at. So when I take the highs up, you're gonna hear a little bit more presence in my voice. One thing that will put people to sleep if you have a deeper voice is having too much bass in there. So for me, I normally drop my lows a little bit. If you don't have a deep voice, you might actually be taking that up. Make sure and put on a pair of headphones because if you have that deep voice, it might end up being too much of a reverberation in those headphones. As far as the mids goes, I normally take this down for my voice, but again, you really wanna play with these. Take them up or down, do some recordings, and listen to see how it sounds for your voice and your microphone, because there's really no standard that somebody can tell you to go up or down on any of these. You just have to use your ears. All right, our next one is one, especially for those people that like to live stream or those moments where you get excited. We're gonna add in a compressor. Now a compressor is also a little bit complicated to explain, but imagine all the loud parts of your voice. When you yell, when you're screaming, when you're excited, 
it's going to really sound and kind of peak at that level. What a compressor does is it squishes that down so it takes those high points and normalizes them a little bit more. To kind of break that down, the ratio, again, in this instance, we want it to be around three to four, but this might be different with where you're at. Threshold at default is negative 18 decibels. So once you cross the threshold, the compressor is going to kick in and it's really gonna help those loud moments sound far more normal and less shrieky or less piercing to people's ears and it makes your stream sound much better. The ratio on this, again, you'll play with this, the attack time can be left at six because once you go over that threshold, you want it to kick in pretty quickly and you can leave everything else there. Now you'll notice that when you do use the compressor that you're gonna lose a little bit of that volume, that loudness factor, and you can see that our volumes come down a little bit. This is where you can make up some of that gain that you're losing and kind of get that and nudge that up a little bit. And you can see now we're kind of getting up there, but it is peaking a little bit, but we are around the levels that we wanna be, just kind of going right above that negative 10 to negative six range, which is a far more comfortable range, which leads us to our next filter to take care of this. This filter is the limiter. This is basically a ceiling. This is as loud as you can possibly go. So no matter how loud I yell, no matter how much I'm screaming, I will not clip. I will cap out at negative six decibels in terms of the loudness. So I don't have everybody else wondering why I'm breaking their ears. This is your way of putting a cap on it. The compressor is a great way to make that audio sound a lot more normal when you get loud. And the limiter makes sure that it doesn't go beyond a certain decibel level, saving everybody so you have far more pleasing sounds at the high end that are also capped so they don't go too high. As I mentioned before, make sure that these are all done in order. If you did add one of these later or you deleted it, you can always highlight this and move it up and down, but this is the chain that you wanna go in where it goes from one to the next. Making your USB microphone sound a little bit more like this is actually really easy to do, and there's also some really simple things you can do to really enhance your stream using a couple of things in OBS. So check out this playlist that I put together with some short videos to really take your stream to the next level.